I'm excited about the theme, whitefish. It's one of those beautiful ingredients that has such a versatile way about it. You can have different cooking techniques. It's really one of those ingredients I love to use. It's gonna be fun. I love whitefish, and especially this beautiful Atlantic striped bass. Whole fish is great to work with, and don't be intimidated by it. You wanna look for a flesh that bounces back, it means it's nice and fresh. Also, you want nice, bulbish eyes. Look at their gills. They're nice, bright, and red. It means they were just in the water. You want to smell like the water it came from. We're gonna break this down. It's gonna be very simple. You see these dorsal fins right here? So I like to take those off first. They're pretty aggressive and they'll poke you while you're cleaning. And kitchen shears are best. Great. So to fillet a gutted fish, I like to start by taking the head off. So right behind that collarbone, almost where those gills end. You can always do a nice little snap at this point and then follow through with your knife. Right where I took off that dorsal fin, I'm gonna work to the left side of that. One solid strike for a cleaner line all the way to the tip. And then just follow that line straight, working towards the tail. Backbone, the ribs come out a little bit and then they curve. So make sure that you're following through on the other side. And these little scraps and trims are gonna be perfect in our fume. Just make it nice and tidy for presentation. Now there's just a couple pin bones. Perfect. Now, Chris, can you come over and finish that next one? Yes, sir. So in our fumé, I'm gonna add some aromatics. Most importantly for a fish fumé, it's fennel. It has that beautiful, kind of licorice -y taste. That's really gonna add another flavor to our beautiful stock. When doing mirepoix, make sure that they're the same size. They're gonna be cooking at the same time. So that'll mean that the flavors will release at the same time. Save these fronds. I love the flavor and I love the look. Really enjoy using them for a uh, garnish. For the onion part of this, I have leek. Beautiful, delicate flavor. But the one thing tends to get pretty dirty inside. A great way, getting rid of that dirt, put into a pitcher of water and flip those leaves like you're flipping through the pages of a book. Just gonna add them with our beautiful bones and trims. Thank you, sir. And some water and wine. I like a Chardonnay with my fish, but anything that you love drinking at home is just as great. And my favorite part, some aromatics. Peppercorns will add a nice bite to it. Baileys just add a full earthiness. And my favorite herb, thyme. It just really adds so much to it. Low and slow, a nice simmer. I don't want it boiling. I want a delicate, delicate flavor coming from this. So 
So for about an hour and a bit, we're gonna strain it and then we're gonna wound up with something gorgeous. It smells like the ocean. It has a nice color, nice sheen to it. And this is gonna be the perfect base for my chowder later. A few maize, got a nice delicate fish stock and rounds out something so simple like a chowder. It just is really valuable and delicious. Real easy, delicious, and beautiful way to prepare bass is whole and roasted. And I'm gonna show you how I do it. All fish deserves a sauce. And I'm feeling I'm gonna have a little North African flavors with my fish today. I'm gonna do a cherimoula. Lots of herbs, cilantro and parsley. So a good way to get those leaves is just shave towards the tip of that herb bunch. Adding roast garlic to it, we'll just add that other dimension to the sauce. Cumin, that beautiful earthiness. A little bit of heat, I like my chili flakes. And saffron, a little more expensive, but it truly adds that little floralness to the sauce. Then lots of lemon. Fish love citrus. Just get the seeds out. Olive oil to get it going. Bright, citrusy, a little bit of heat from those chili flakes. A little sweet, the herbs came through. The sauce is delicious. So to keep it that North African theme, in Africa, they use preserved lemons. They have a sweet brininess to them. It's truly incredible with fish. In that cavity, like a little pocket for our filling. So I'm gonna season that cavity with a little bit of salt and this beautiful mix here. It's a duca spice, so it has almonds, hazelnuts, some coriander, cumin. It adds a real nuttiness to many dishes. Right underneath this fin, and don't overthink it, just a simple knot. I like to keep the knot towards the belly, because while it's cooking, it might overlap on that beautiful flesh, but in the belly, you won't see that. more of that great, fragrant duca spice. So I'm just gonna do a quick score, about four nice pulls. I'll add to the presentation because we wanna keep it nice and flat. Now high heat for not too long. Oh my God, it smells good. You can already tell it's gonna go incredible with the tremula sauce. See how simple but impressive that is? And it truly does fall off the bone. Cooking a whole fish may seem intimidating, but it's really not. It's just focus on flavor and time. It's the easiest thing to look at to see whether it's exactly what you want it to be.
two other ways of cooking our bass. One is no heat and one is high heat. Grapeseed oil has a nice clean flavor and it has a high smoke point. I'm just gonna do a quick score across the skin. Not too deep. I want it to stay nice and straight. Season both sides. You just want it to stay nice and still and really let that skin get nice and crispy. Moments away. So you can start to see the brown edges and then starting to look a little opaque and white. We're ready for the flip. Golden, beautiful. Just a couple more moments. golden crust, that crispy, crispy skin. Let's see if it has some flaky flesh. Look at that, just gorgeous. Perfect. That's looking great. We're gonna close? Yeah, almost time for the cream, thank you. So when I say no heat, it means ceviche. And that is cooking the fish in an acid, some delicious citrus. I like to add some fresh corn. So just blanch it, and then you have these kernels that are really gonna add a nice pop throughout it. A little bit of cilantro, because it's really gonna come through and remain nice and bright. For the acid, I'm gonna use both orange and limes. I like a fair amount of heat in my ceviche. This is some sambal. It's become quite popular. You can get it at most grocery stores now. And add a fair amount. Little trick, grab the tail end of your filet and just cut into it slightly. And then you almost wanna have enough to grab that skin. A Little bit of angle and then just slide your knife with the skin. Perfect. About an inch. I'm gonna marinate this for about two hours or so to let those citrus juices really cook the flesh. I don't want to add too much salt because this will actually speed up the cooking. Just a couple hours, really smell it. And you can also see that the cooking's happened because it's no longer a clear flesh. It's almost white and opaque. Sweet potato will add a little bit of creaminess and richness. You can really smell the sambal and the lime together. And just some fresh red onion, a little bit of heat and brightness. The cilantro really brightens it up. I love it. Mm -hmm. Chris, would you like to try this? I would love to, Chef, thank you. Should probably share it. See how they feel about the seasoning. You guys want to try some? Mm, my 
fume is ready. Best thing about chowder is just letting those flavors marry, get to know each other. Get dirty, get involved, and enjoy making something that you're not used to. Another simple but very elegant way to cook whitefish is called un papillot. With my fish, I'm gonna add some aromatics with some zucchini. I want to cook at the same time, so I'm gonna cut it julienne. Think of matchsticks, 16 of an inch, all uniform. I also like to add some carrots. There's a little bit of sweetness in there, and same size. And can I have your bowl, please? Sure. We have that beautiful aromatics. Added some onion, some garlic, coated with olive oil. We have our delicious white fish. I'm just gonna season them on their own. Now for writing our love letters, I'm just gonna use some parchment paper. I absolutely love tarragon, that nice anise flavor. A nice fold, even on both sides. And then by crimping, we're gonna be able to lock in that steam. Those flavors are gonna circulate within the parchment. So just do one quick fold towards the center. And then another kind of overlapping it. Make sure it's nice and tight, kind of working around in a half circle. Just do a nice seal. Now I mentioned how much I love that tarragon anise flavor. I'm really gonna amplify that by adding some French Pernod. and finish your crimping. And looking for that kind of half moon shape. High heat, it's gonna be perfect. Pretty excited for this chowder. It's looking good, chef. Great. Let's add it to our amazing looking fume. Thank you. Thank you. Clams first. They have a thicker shell, they're gonna take the longest. Now we're gonna add our mussels and white fish at the same time. They'll take the same amount of cooking. Don't wanna be too aggressive, I don't wanna break up those delicious pieces of white fish. Now I gotta check on our love letters. Smell amazing. Slide those on there. And now it's like opening a present. Little snips, steam coming out. You can smell the vegetables, the lemon, the tarragon. That's beautiful. A 
flaky it is. You can already tell how moist it is. Whitefish are just one of those ingredients that are so easy to work with. That was a great day, team. I described Papillette as a love letter. That's romantic because you're sharing that moment together. When cooking at home, look at the recipe and steps. If it's making a stock, do that, wait a day, and then move on. You can keep building to increase your confidence and to increase your knowledge and appreciation for that recipe that you're making.